Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Penright Oil, Hair and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm Eggs. Hello and welcome to another episode of Classic Restos. But before I go any further, here is an opportunity for you to go and buy some stuff. Shannon's offer us as enthusiasts just so much more. Classic bikes, cars, trucks. Bundle it all together with your house and contents and receive a multi-policy discount. Call Shannon's on 134646 for a quote. Sign up for the Shannon's Club. Interact with others. List your car club find events and so much more. The Shannon's Club truly is your garage at shannons.com.au. For oil, coolants and additives choose Penright. They have stood the test of time. Established 1926. Australian owned, Australian made. Oil with more zinc for older style engines. No matter what the engine, no matter what the application. Contact the Penright Technical Assistance Team seven days a week at penrightoil.com.au. Oil right, use Penright, simply a better class of oil. For some of the largest range of tools for all trades and DIYs, don't go past Hare and Forbes Machinery House. Established 1930, with branches around Australia and New Zealand. Their showrooms will have you browsing for hours, and no matter where you are, you can buy online at machineryhouse.com.au. From a garage jack through to a lathe, Hare and Forbes has the range. machineryhouse.com.au and on this week's episode of Classic Restos, it's back into New South Wales, southwest of Sydney, the township of Tarmore. I am here at the Anglican College, and last year's event was quite impressive, so much so that I have decided to return. Welcome to the 2015 Wheels at Wallandilly. The Wallandilly Anglican College has their P&F Association. Last year was this event's first year and the cocktail of mix stirring up in the punch bowl was very impressive. Again, it's one of these rural events where pretty well anything mechanical is welcome. We're in the era now where anything that is old is cool. So a car, a bike, a truck or any type of machinery could be found here on display where the drooling eyes of awe from many spectators will keep this day motoring along very nicely. So time now to poke around a little bit and see what I can find. The 2015 Wheels at Wallandilly. What a great little event. How are you, Alan? Not bad, thanks, Rich. Very good. Are you enjoying yourself? I am, yes. Yeah. Yes, and we just got here. I am enjoying it. <laughs> Did you have fun driving here? Ah, uh, yes. Yep. Didn't have to come far. <laughs> <laughs> Only about two kilometres. So you didn't have to bring a cut lunch? No, that's right, yes. Now, speaking of uh, what you arrived in here, 1934 Plymouth. This is an outstanding car. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, you've driven into the car park here, Alan. You've lit the whole car park up with this car. Right. Yes, yeah, it is a nice car. It was done up in uh, 91 by a chap in, uh, in Griffith. My uncle had bought it off him. And uh, my uncle's getting old now, he's 85 and he's getting a bit too old to get in and drive it. And my first car that I can remember my father ever had was a 34 Plymouth Roadster. Isn't it interesting how we go through life and we, we, uh, we, we, we tend to lean towards the cars that we can remember when we were quite young? Exactly, yes. And I'm sure that there'd be a lot of people that wish that they were born in 1934 that looked as good as this car today. <laughs> yes, I remember back years ago when I was about eight, my father went to Markle's wedding in, in Finlay and of course then there was a lot of dirt roads and I can remember sitting in the dinky seat <laughs> going to Finlay with all the dust. <laughs> wow. you know. What beautiful memories, eh? It is, yeah, very nice memories. Alan, tell us the significance of the Holden body badge on the side of this Plymouth. Um, that's a very interesting question, isn't it? Yes, it was, it was uh, built in, in South Australia by Holden um, and Holden 
here in Australia built the roadsters. After 1932 in America, there was no more roadsters built. They were all built here. Uh, Holden, they, Holden did a wonderful job back in that era of building the bodies, didn't they? They did, and it's amazing how many different bodies they did build yeah. back, back in those days. Yeah. For, for other brand names. That's exactly right, yeah. yep. What powers it up front, Alan? It's a, a normal, it's a PF motor. Um, it's a six-cylinder, um, 24 horsepower. What's PF? What performs fabulously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just the model of it. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's as far as I know, yeah. You know. I love the interior. I mean, we've got the, got the red leather going on. I mean, it just looks so good. The dicky seat, dicky seat out back. I mean, uh, it's just got so much class, doesn't it? It has, yeah, yeah. So, I mean... When, when you look back at the years, they just don't build cars today like they used to. When you see a car going down the road today, you've got to look at the badge to see what it is because they all look the damn same. They do. They do, yep. These cars were built back in an era where they boasted exuberance. And I keep on saying, these designs came from guys with the pencils on the drawing boards. Just incredible. No computer assistance. No, it's, that's exactly right. <laughs> it? It's almost hard yeah. to comprehend. Yeah. Alan, thanks for being on today's show. Good. Thanks for turning up in the Plymouth, eh? That's, that's fine. Thanks. Yeah. Now, Alan, you're here today with your wife, Jenny. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Does she like driving oh, around yeah. in it? She loves it, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I've got an old 48 Jag at home, too. She likes yeah. going on that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you left the Jag at home and brought the Plymouth out. Yep. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Okay, then. Th thanks, Fletch. Moving through, we've got Lyle. How are you, Lyle? Good. Hey, Fletch. How, you having fun here today? Yes. You know what? When we talk about the up-and-coming generation into our hobby and our fraternity, this is the example we're looking at. Now, how old are you, Lyle? Nine. Nine years of age. Now, you've got some cars at home. What are they? Tell us. Uh, 41st Anniversary GT. Um, then the BF Cobra Ute. And springtime yellow GT. How many cars you got all, all up? Ten. You got, you got ten. And you're going to end up with every one of them, right? Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> How cool is it? Mate, thanks for being on uh, Classic Restos for this week because I think it's pretty cool. Nine-year-old guy, all these cars sitting at home, and you're going to be driving them for many more years to come, aren't you? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, mate. You're watching the 2015 Wheels at Wallandilly, thanks to Shannon's Insurance, Penright Oil, Hare and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm Eggs. Back with more after this. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go. So Shannon's laid-up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. In 1926, Australia's Penrite Oil Company was established. Almost 90 years of research, development and refining under the harsh Australian conditions has made Penrite Oil what it is today. Precision, performance, reliability and protection. Championship winning products. Trust Penrite. If you need a new piece of equipment for your workshop, you need Hair and Forbes Machinery House. From a garage jack through to a lathe, Hair and Forbes has the range. And Hair and Forbes Machinery House are Australian owned, established since 1930. You will be greeted by friendly, helpful staff and you can buy from anywhere online at machinerynhouse.com.au. Hair and Forbes Machinery House. Find your closest store at machinerynhouse.com.au. Moving through on today's show as we do, we have Kerry now. How are you, Kerry? Good, thanks, Sledge. That's why, mate. A beautifully restored 1972 Capri. Now, there's a bit of an emotional story attached to this car. Kerry, yes. pl please elaborate. Yes, sir. Is um, my best mate had this car for uh, uh, a, a lot of years, probably since '79 through to 10 years ago when he passed away. And um, in his will, he left me the car. Um, we best mates went through everything. And the car was originally, uh, well, was, this is the original colour. 
when I got it, it was Vermilion Fire, and he always wanted to restore it back to original wild plum, but he never got around to doing it. So I've tried to do it in his honour. Obviously, uh, your mate's name was Dave. Yeah, yeah, Dave Horner. Um, he's he was known in our club as the maestro. What he didn't know about Capri's and what he didn't teach me isn't worth knowing. I think it's a beautiful tribute too that you've um, kept the number plates in his in his honour as well. Yeah, so I always I, yeah, I've got the plates made up for show, and I always wherever it's showing, it'll always be showing as Dave's. Confuses some people. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, Kerry. Dave's looking down on this car and he's probably got a smile from ear to ear because you've certainly gone above and beyond. I mean, this is an immaculate car. It's one of these cars that's been restored that you look at every bolt and it's had a socket on it. I mean, nothing has been left. You've done everything. I love the paint. Uh, that paint is just sensational. So deep. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually been painted twice. Uh, the first time the first painter didn't work out right and then it was repainted again. Yeah. Um, so it's ended up being a five-year resto instead of about two. Yep. But motor, every every nut and bolt, everything's been gone through. Run through the engine specs for us. Uh, it's 30 thou oversize, uh, balance, deport heads, mild cam, new pistons, rings, bearings, standard 40 mil downdraft Weber overhauled. Just a nice, sweet drive, yep. not wild, just beautiful car to drive. These V6s in the Caprice went well, didn't they? Very well, and very talky car. Um, you can take off in second gear and just motor away. They're just a very easy car to drive. Walk us through the interior, Kerry, what you've done there. Okay, the interior, I, I had it, it, it used to have cloth inserts and all that. I've, I've put it all back to original black basket weave, with the exception of the rear seat. The rear seat has contoured back seat with a pull down armrest, which the English models had, not the Australian. Right. Just as a little bit different, I think they're a nicer looking seat and yep. yeah. When you stop and think about it, I mean the two door car with the V6 when we look at the performance packages for 1972 and what was available, I mean it was head to head with the XU1 Yes, yes, it was head to head with uh, matched it uh, with the LJ XU1 uh, sorry, the LC XU1, the LJ had a little bit more legs on this than the, the LC, uh, but yeah, head to head with the LC and, yep. and sat side by side. Yep. Kerry Really love what you've done as a tribute to Dave, and uh, obviously this is a car that you're going to keep forever, no doubt. Yep. Yes, and, that's uh, right. It's not going anywhere. Not after this heartache, and <laughs> and and for Dave as well. Again, it's just another uh, feel-good story about our classic car fraternity and the people that are within it, and uh, what we do for our mates. Good on you, mate. Thank you very much, Fletch. Time now for a small truck on today's episode of Classic Restos, a 1956 F100 sitting here in all its glory, and we have the owner here, Rob. Hi, Rob. How are you, Fletch? I'm great. Yourself? Yeah, good. Good. That's good. Now, this truck's been through a bit of a process, hasn't it? it took a, It was a bit of a road to get it to where it is today, right? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, it took over um, three months to get here from America, uh, which I imported uh, back in 2013. And um, yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare. What sort of condition was it in, Rob? Uh, what you see now is how it arrived. Yep. Um, after starting the process of uh, importing it, I heard a lot of horror stories, which um, had me a bit worried to what condition it was going <laughs> to, to uh, turn up like. A mystery bag, he didn't know what he was going to get. But look, w when it turned up and, it, and you saw it like this, I mean, you must have just gone, oh, what a, what a, what a relief. Well, yeah, it was a load off my mind, I tell you. Yeah, to, um, so all it's had is just a bit of a polish up. Yeah. Um, run through the truck uh, with us, Rob. Tell us some of the options, features. Um, it's got uh, power, power windows, uh, air conditioning. Uh, it's got a 350 Chev motor, um, a 350 automatic tranny in it, heaters. Uh, yeah, so virtually, yeah, just what you see is... And Rob, what colour is it? And don't say dark black. No, it's just uh, just black. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know, it's just black, yeah. It's just nice too when you look at the, the truck too. I mean, the, the, the black, as rich as it is, and just the shiny bling around it as well, just highlighting that as well. It's uh, a really good looking vehicle, isn't it? No, oh, it definitely is, yeah. That's what took my eye and sort of only looking at at photos and a, a video of the engine running. So that's all I had to go on. Mate, we look in the interior there, seat looks like it's out of a Cadillac or something. No, it's just in the, it's the original bench seat, yeah. just been um, upholstered with the velour. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so. it's very nice. It's almost like that uh, the brocade look looks great. Yeah. Yeah, no, it looks um, very nice. Good on you. Mm. Rob, thanks for being on today's show, mate, yeah. sticking around and sharing your truck with us uh, because I've uh, been in touch with Rob a little bit over the years and uh, have heard about the journey with you and your truck and it's finally great to catch up and see the finished product, mate. Mm. No, thanks, Fletch. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks, mate. All right. Very good. Thank you. If you love your classic American iron, along with beautiful USA countryside, well, then perhaps you should consider a Fletch tour. Have a look at this. You deserve a Fletch tour. See the amazing Ford, GM and Chrysler Nationals at Carlisle events, along with museums and private collections in beautiful Pennsylvania, USA. Then it's the Motown city of Detroit and its region taking in more die-hard stuff with incredible history, rounding off with the Woodward Dream Cruise, the largest moving car cruise in the world. The best part of coming here, actually, was having Fletch here. We get picked up, we get dropped off. Fletch is a wonderful tour guide. I would just recommend a Fletch tour to anybody. Go to classicrestos.com.au and click on the Fletch Tours icon for more information. Hope you're enjoying today's show. Back with more after this. She could do with a bit extra. You'll need a bit extra doing this or this. They could all do with a bit extra. And you'll definitely need a bit extra here. Our engines need the extra protection you get with Penrite's range of premium oils and lubricants engineered right here for every application under the harsh Australian sun. Penrite, a better class of oil used by a better class of mechanic and available from over 5,000 outlets across Australia. If you need a new piece of equipment for your workshop, you need Hare and Forbes Machinery House. Hair and Forbes Machinery House have showrooms around Australia and New Zealand that will have you browsing for hours. See the largest range of industrial and workshop DIY tools. You will be greeted by friendly, helpful staff and you can buy from anywhere online at machinerynhouse.com.au. Hair and Forbes Machinery House. Find your closest store at machinerynhouse.com.au. Every weekend around Australia, Motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people. All sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. With me now, Bernice Madonna, the organiser of this fantastic event. How are you, Bernice? Good, thanks, Fletch. That's the way. Day shaping up fine? Fantastic day. We've had 270 cars today. Uh, increase on last year. How many numbers, approximately? Last year we had 210. So yeah, It's the old story with these shows, isn't it? I mean, they just progressively get bigger each year. The exciting thing here, too, it's only the second year, right? It is. Our second annual, so going up for our third annual next year, hopefully even bigger and better. Um, money off to a good cause, too. Tell us about that. Of course, it's going to Wallandilly Anglican College, so 100% of the profits go back into the school to purchase books or computers or whatever basically the teachers and the students need. How cool is it these days too with our car shows? I mean, they're such money makers for different charities, which is just so neat. Um, and it's in an environment that we all love. Uh, this particular car show today, all makes and models welcome. Yes, makes models, anything, bikes. We also had some big rigs turn up as well, which were fantastic. So yeah, it, there was a lot there for everyone. Bernice, it takes a lot of time and effort to do this. You run the Boss Craft business as well with Sean. You've got enough on your plate. You still put time aside to get this together as well. Good on you. Thank you. Thank you. Look, we do. Um, Boss, Craft, Boss Craft is a restoration business, so we're basically enthusiasts, which is why we thought this show would be a fantastic fundraiser with 100% of the profits going back to the school. Yeah. And it's just something good for the local community. We figure that 5 or $10 per car and for families to come is, you know, a pretty cheap day out and all of it adds up at the end of the day to make a good income for the school to go worthwhile. In terms of finding out information about next year, is there a website or a Facebook page? Yeah, look, check out bosscraft.com. Uh, Wheels at Wallandilly has a page on that and any of the information that we put up there as people become on board or car clubs come on board and things, we advertise it all there. Awesome. Always a pleasure, Bernice. Thank you. Thanks, Fletch. How's this for something different on today's show? We have Brett. Hello, Brett. Hi, Fletch. How you doing, mate? Good, Brett. Now, it's not that you're the different one. It's your car, right? 
this is true. Now, it's a commercial vehicle and it's a Mini. Tell us about it. It's 1980. Mate, uh, as far as I know, they were. It was one percent of the run. Uh, they made six million minis as units. The one percent of the run, so they made fifty thousand utilities. That's what they call them in the UK. Um, I know there's about fifteen to twenty, maybe in Australia, that are registered or being worked on as projects. Uh, I own two. I have a 1980 model, which is here, which is I've had for about twelve months, and I'm just about to restore it. Um, and my dad's got a 1963, an Austin, yeah. which is nearly factory, but mm. probably a 9 out of 10. It's, it's beautifully finished. Wow. kind of doesn't make sense almost to make a ute out of a small car, does it? Oh, mate, I think that's the beauty yeah. of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Two cartons of beer in the back and you're done. But that's the per perfect car, isn't it? What more do you need? The pay anything, a tons of waste, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it certainly is. Um, what I like about this little Mini is the fact that uh, this is interesting stuff because the vehicle is 1980. Now, being a commercial vehicle, is that why it's still got the sliding glass? Because that went out of the Minis back in the 60s, didn't it? Mate, I, I think so. I think, like, we had a little bit of a chat before we come on the air, and, and I believe that you were right. I think it, uh, being a commercial vehicle, it's, a, it's stripped back to the bare minimum. So you, you got all the basic... Yes. stuff on the car you didn't get the 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 glitz and the glamour as you do with the cooper s's sure. and, and so forth speaking of the cooper s now the standard grill again because commercial vehicle uh, is like our early hq1 tunners uh, through to wb for instance you you've got a very basic grill set up there it's a work vehicle now here you've got an aftermarket grill put in replacing the original daggy one so to speak yeah it, it was a part of the initial frame of the the front of the car and uh, they looked very ordinary if, if not boring and basic and I suppose it's like it puts a bit of a smile you know on the front of the car and it's got a smiley face it has got a it's, it's happy face. it's happy because it's here and it's happy because Brett's driving it round. this is true this is true Fletch and he's at, he's at one with his car I am we are one we are one obviously a fun car to drive that's what the the mini really stands for doesn't it absolutely like you know I mean you've got different genres of, of, of different styles of cars and, and people who love minis love minis and like v-dubs and so forth but uh, being a tall guy six foot three I, I've always liked to have something a little bit unique and original and and not knowing that there was pickups and utilities I was actually going to chop a, a car down and then um, someone brought to my attention that they did and I was able to buy one and I actually bought one uh, off a friend unfortunately I, I sold it to buy an engager ring for my wife and 10 years on the track I was able to find two yeah. overseas and, and like I said they're very rare to find and and I've like I said I, I it's my passion I, I've always wanted one to restore and I can't wait to restore this thing and hopefully in the next 12 to 18 months if I cross paths with you again you'll, you'll see the finished project. You alluded to the fact that you were six foot three. It's quite surprising the amount of leg room that's actually in the front of these minis. Yeah, I think people uh, with the minis that they don't realise that the the, the, fire, the firewall is actually the front of the car. So there's no dash in them. So so literally where the pedals come out of that firewall, that's the inside of the cabin. So it does give you a lot of leg room, and and that's when you see someone obviously six foot three. And your, yeah. and your knees up around your chin if you're sitting in the back. Yeah, when you see six foot three fella crawl himself out of this thing, it's actually quite humorous. And yeah, especially I, when he falls over, he falls on the ground. He sort of need a can opener to get out, then he well, that, lands on the footpath. Well, that's all those beers in the back, those two slabs that we talked about yeah. before. Yeah. Speaking of beers too, I think you might have had a few beers when you were th trying to work out what wheels you're going to have on the car. <laughs> now we've got two wheels different on front than in the back. Story there. Look, the car come out with four mags from uh, overseas where I, where I did import the car from and the tyres obviously had perished and a day before I found out of bringing it to this event, I went to bring the car here but one of the tyres was flat yep. so I couldn't actually get that tyre repaired because it was a 12 inch rim. Yep. I actually, my friend donated two rear tyres so I could actually come to this event today. Well, that's good. Well, Brett, look, uh, we're going to have to cut it there otherwise it's going to turn into the Brett half hour. Um, <laughs> The ute is about to be pulled down. You're not happy with it. It's going to be restored. Yes. It looks good now. So it'll be great to see it down the track and hopefully going to plan, it'll be here at this event next year. Oh. Fingers crossed. Huh. Well, that's the goal. It, like To me, I rate it as like a 5 or a 6 out of 10 at the moment. I want to get up to that 9, 9.5. So I, I'm hoping to show you 
with the finished project. Good on you, Brett. Thank, Thank you, Fletch. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Fletch. Well, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos, a smaller show here, the Wheels at Wallandilly event. In the meantime, classicrestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD box sets of the show, Classic Restos merchandise, contact information on joining us on a Fletch tour, and, of course, the major sponsors as well. As I say at the end of every show, until next week, no matter where you're watching from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Penrite Oil and Heron Forbes Machinery House.